The science of the mind-body connection or the correlation between your thoughts and emotions and your physical health. Today I want to address a very interesting correlation that exists between your thoughts and emotions and your physical health through the way your DNA is being read. Going into the biochemistry of the connection between the mind and your physical health. Most of us are under the impressions that our physical health is completely encoded in our DNA and predetermined. But I want to elucidate today how this is not true. I also want to explain how our emotional state is more than just a rise and fall of our hormone levels. So what does it mean to carry a genetic disease in your DNA and what is the impact of the mind in all of this? I will provide you with concrete scientific evidence for the mind-body connection. My name is Davy. I am a PhD student in chemical engineering at the University of Cambridge. And in my free time, I love to study anything related to the law of attraction, the mind, psychology, quantum physics of manifestation. And a very interesting topic is the mind-body connection. There is actually a very clear influence of the mind on the way DNA is being read. I've had a lot of biochemistry in my undergraduate. I know everything from A to Z about how DNA is being read, how DNA is stored in the cell, how it is being translated, transcribed, etc. I know all of these steps in full detail. Now, what has only recently come to my knowledge is the sort of extra layer that comes with this, which is the mind and the effect that the mind can have on the way the DNA is being read. And that's what I want to elucidate to you today. I will give you insight into, first of all, how DNA is not at the root of existence, but consciousness. Secondly, how human emotions are more than just hormones. Thirdly, I want to elucidate how carrying a genetic disease is merely a chance. And finally, I want to give you some scientific studies that have been done recently to prove this mind body connection. Let's start with the fact that DNA is not at the root of existence. Let me first give you a little bit of background as to what DNA is. Maybe the non-scientists here might not be fully aware. So we carry DNA with us in every cell in our body. Our DNA is sort of our recipe book for our existence. Now what does DNA actually encode for? Every recipe, every gene in the DNA encodes for a protein. The proteins are the work of their body. The proteins execute all of the functions. And don't confuse this with the proteins that we consume. Those will just be broken down into amino acids and then will be used as building blocks to generate proteins. The proteins that I'm talking about are mainly enzymes but also other type of proteins. So if our body is the factory and the DNA is sort of the recipe book and the proteins are the workers that do everything, that carry out all of the functions in your body. The interesting thing about this DNA recipe book, 98% is not even being read in this DNA. We literally carry all of these genes with us that are never actually being used or being used to generate a protein. The protein really is at the core of execution of our physical health and our body functions, right? So as I said, 98% of this recipe book is just never being used. And what the exact function is of this junk DNA, is what they call it, is actually something we don't know fully. We are still trying to explore what is this other 98% of DNA that we're not using. Now, what decides whether the DNA is being read? That has to do with the very complex folding of the DNA and in nucleosomes and chromatin. It is a very complex folding. So you can imagine that DNA that is folded really tightly and tucked away is something that will never really be read. But the DNA that is sort of open and exposed is something that is a recipe that is easily accessible for the proteins, the workers, and they can read that recipe and use it to make more proteins. So it is also the proteins that execute the reading of the DNA. They are the workers, but they're also using it to generate more of themselves. Now, what decides what of the DNA is being read. DNA is completely dynamic. DNA is completely fluid. It changes all the time. So parts that are being read change, parts that are being tugged away change. And this DNA folding or this hiding of the recipes is a very dynamic process. But there are actually things that we have found that influence 
what part of the DNA is being read, and that is the environment. And with the environment, I'm talking about the concentration of other molecules in your blood, or the presence of a certain other protein, other signaling molecules, hormones, they can all affect which recipe we're gonna read from the DNA recipe book. So what I want you to understand, DNA is not at the core of existence. DNA is the recipe for protein expression, which is the recipe for life. But there's one level before that, and that is the environment. The environment the DNA exists in decides which recipe is being read. So we're adding one layer to this cascade. Now, we've already found in science that environmental factors such as stress, and lifestyle, so what you eat, but also the way you feel, can influence the environment through hormones, but also through epigenetic changes. So that means that the tugging away of the DNA or which parts of the recipes are being hidden, there's a direct link between stress and the environment of the DNA and then which recipes are being read. So mental states, emotional states can directly influence the gene expression through epigenetic mechanisms. The second point that I want to make is that human emotions are more than just a rise and fall of hormone levels. We are often under the impression that the complexity of our human emotions just comes down to the rise and fall of certain hormones. So when we feel good, we measure this hormone, and when we feel bad, we measure that hormone. Or when certain parts of our brain light up on an MRI, that means we're happy, and when other parts light up, that means we're depressed and we're treating our body as a sort of machine. And we know that there are stress hormones, adrenaline are related to feeling stressed, uh, oxytocins are for positive interactions or feeling in love, and dopamine and endorphins are associated with feeling good. Now, what we measure is the hormone, but there is one higher level of consciousness that actually decides which hormones are being released. There must be another trigger. There must be a higher consciousness. There has been a scientific study that showed this. Oxytocin is the love hormone, which is released when females have sex with a partner, they release oxytocins. Now they've done a study where if the female has sex against her will, these hormones are not being released, which proves that there must be a decision, there must be a mind, there must be a consciousness, a buff just the simple release of hormones that is based on triggers in the environment that decide what we feel. So it is not untrue that our hormones can affect the way we feel, but the point is that there must be level higher than that, which is the consciousness which decides which hormones are even being released. My third point is about a genetic disease is just a chance. We are under the impression that if we have a certain gene encoded in our DNA to be prone to diabetes, to be prone to certain mental health disease, to be prone to this. What science actually shows is that only 5% of genetically encoded diseases will definitely cause a genetic disease. The other 95% are uncertain. So when you are carrying a certain gene with you for a genetic disease, there is still a 95% chance that that gene never comes to expression. And again, it is not the DNA that decides our physical health or our body. It is the expression of the genes. It is which recipe are we reading. And that is determined by the environment, which is the cellular environment in the body, which is then determined by a consciousness. As I said, DNA is not static. It is very dynamic, very fluid. It can change all the time. And there is a direct link that has been shown between the mind and the mental state that you're in and which recipes are being read. So also which genetic diseases come to expression. So when you carry a genetic disease with you, there is still a very plausible chance, a 95% chance that that gene will never be expressed, which is determined by the environment, which is then determined by consciousness. There's a study that was described by Deepak Chopra in his Meta Human book, a study done in 2018 by Stanford, where they had a group of people that had a genetic inclination for diabetes and a group of people that didn't. And the same for a group of people that had a genetic inclination for performing poor in physical performance, so exercise, and a group of people that didn't carry that gene with them. 
Now what they've done is they've given these groups some food and then they measure the leptin concentrations, which is related to diabetes. So basically trying to see if they can find any signs of diabetes in either of these groups when providing them with food. Now no differences were observed. Then when they told certain people in that research group, you are carrying the gene with you that is making you prone to diabetes. And they also told this to the people that weren't actually genetically carrying that gene with them. And also to people that were. What they found is that the people that they informed on the fact that they were carrying this genetic disease with them, they found implications for the development of diabetes. So my point here being is that it was not the genetic mutation that was giving the group a disadvantage. It was when the group was being told they were carrying the genetic disease with them, whether that was true or not, they were actually exhibiting symptoms of that specific genetic disease. And the same for the physical activity. Even when they weren't genetically disadvantaged in physical activity, they started to perform less well. So what this research clearly shows is that it is the story we carry with us. It is the mind that determines how our physical body expresses itself. My final notion on some proven scientific links in the mind-body connection. One amazing example is the placebo effect. The placebo effect is used every day in clinical studies and scientific research. And what the placebo effect is, is that it is a known phenomenon that if you give a patient that is ill of something a pill, that does nothing, so the pill has no pharmaceutical effects. If you give that pill to the patient and telling the patient that that is medicine, that that is meant to cure the disease, there is this placebo effect where the patient will heal naturally just by the idea of getting a medicine that is making him or her better. Now, why do they use this placebo effect in scientific study? Because it is a sort of baseline. The actual medicine has to perform a little bit better than the placebo placebo effect because otherwise we could just give people empty pills and they would still heal. So the placebo effect is an amazing example of how strong the mind is. If we think we're consuming medicine, something that is meant to make us feel better or to heal us, the mind has the power to heal. Another well-established phenomenon in science is the relation between chronic stress or stress and inflammation. It has been scientifically proven that the mind influences our immune responses and, in and inflammation levels in our blood. And we see this all the time, people that are really stressed, getting a rash or getting eczema or even worse. A recent study in 2023 by Washington University also showed an actual physical implication of the mind-body connection because they showed that this mind-body connection is actually built into the structure of the brain. So the networks that are involved in thinking are integrated into networks that involve bodily functions and physical health. These are physically interlinked. It also is a well-known phenomenon that the neurons in the brain are directly linked to your digestive system. So there is a strong link between your mental state and the way you process foods or the immune responses around your digestive systems. Now that is a little bit of the explanation of the mind-body connection. How I like to view things is that there's a little bit of manifestation power involved as well when it comes to your physical health. So when you assume something bad is going to happen with your physical health, you might manifest it or call it into creation. Remember 95% of the genetic mutations or diseases that we might carry with us or specific genes to be more prone to certain types of behaviors, 95% out of the time, they're not even being read. So don't underestimate the effect that the environment can have on the way the DNA is being read, which is steered by a higher consciousness, which is the mind, which is who you are. That wraps it up for my initial video on the link between the mind and the body or your physical help. I hope you got anything out of this video. I'll definitely have more to say on this if there might be a follow-up at some point. Thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate you being here. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe to my channel. I would really love that. And if you want to know more about my, me and my personal life, feel free to follow me on Instagram, which is Davy lower dash Citaram. And I'd love to see you in my next video. Sending you my love.